First, I'd like to clearly state that this is not a paid review. I bought this device from my own money, so what you're about to hear are my experiences and my honest opinions. So, a desoldering station. That may sound like some unnecessary luxury to some, but if you're doing frequent electronics repairs, or if you like to recycle electronic components like I do, for example, this drawer is filled with multi-channel op-amps and all of these have been desoldered from various old circuit boards and are now ready to be used in new projects. If you like to do that, then a desoldering station is an incredibly handy tool to have. Much better than the copper desoldering wire. I hated using that stuff. So, this is a Chinese-made piece of equipment. It's the model ZD-915. It doesn't have a brand name, but if you just simply search for the model number, you will find it. It's available on eBay. I got mine off eBay, but I'm sure it will also be available on Amazon elsewhere. I got this two years ago in 2016 for 72 euro and 90 cents. The price has since gone up to something around 80 euro, which is quite reasonable. Let's take a closer look. You do have the desoldering gun, obviously, and it does have a holder that mounts to the side. There is a sponge, which I don't use. I always use a sponge for the soldering iron, which you can see in the background. We have the power button. We have a selector switch, degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, and then temperature up and temperature down buttons. Now, as we turn this on, it does still have a certain relatively high temperature because I just had this turned on in a previous take. I used a stopwatch and it does take about one minute and 44 seconds for this to heat up to the set temperature which I have set to 350 degrees, which has always worked fine for me. Now you can hear the cooling fan that this unfortunately does have. It's relatively loud. It's easy to ignore, but each time I turn this off, I'm like, ugh, the silence. So, how do you use one of these? Well, just very briefly, you take the desoldering gun, you set it on the solder joint that you want to remove, you let it heat up, and then you uh, turn on the vacuum pump. Now, you can hear the vacuum pump is very loud, but that really doesn't matter because that, of course, is not running all the time. Let's take a closer look at the desoldering gun. This is a relatively lightweight device. It attaches to the main unit using a rubber cable and a rubber vacuum hose. So this was done properly, nice and flexible, no problems with any of that. Now, the desoldering gun does contain some parts that over time will go bad. So, along with the desoldering station, you not only get the instruction manual, you also get a set of two replacement tips. These are all the same size, from what I can tell. And you can get more of these, again, on eBay. They cost about 8 euro, that's a set of three of these tips, and I think those are different sizes. Also, inside of here, you have some felt pads that are used for filtering. And again, you do get some replacements along with the desoldering station. And again, you can also get these on eBay, and they cost about 6 euro. And then, every once in a while, 
the desoldering gun will plug up, and if it does, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, you can use the cleaning pins that come along with this. There are three sizes supplied. I hope you can kind of see that. There is a very thick one, and then there is a thin one, and then there was a medium-sized one, which I broke. Now, the cleaning pins, again, you can get replacements for these. They cost about nine euro. This, for example, up here, this reservoir for the solder that you sucked off the circuit boards, this is real glass. So if you would drop this, you'd be in trouble because there is no replacement for that. You will have to replace the entire gun, but it's not the end of the world. A whole entire replacement gun costs about 20 euro on eBay. So replacement parts are readily available. Even after two years, they are still readily available. So no problem there. Replacing the tip is quite easy. You just simply unscrew this front bit like so. And then the old tip just simply pulls off like so. And you can put on the new tip, reinstall the outer sleeve, and there you go. Let's now talk about the problems that I ran into over the two years that I've been using this. The biggest problem is that every once in a while the gun plugs up and then, of course, it won't suck any solder anymore. Now, the problem, from what I can tell, is the heating element is right here in front. However, the little metal tube that the solder gets sucked through continues to all the way back here. So you have this section right here which has no heating and that is if the gun plugs up, it happens here. It always happens here in this area. So that's a little bit of a design flaw, I guess. And it does seem to depend on some other factors. It's more likely to plug up if the little tank is full. That kind of makes sense, I guess. You do get the cleaning pins for the case in which uh, this plugs up and it's really simple. You take the uh, the pin, you stick it into the tip and well you just force it all the way through the gun and in the process you're going to take out any anything that uh, may have plugged up the desoldering gun. Now these cleaning pins as I already said originally there were three and what I found is that only the large diameter one is helpful uh, because this has about the same diameter as the inner diameter of the metal tube in here where the solder gets sucked through. So it takes away everything that is not supposed to be inside that tube. Now, the little difficulty is that uh, the diameter of the hole in the tip is actually too small for this to fit through. Now on the old tip that I've been using for two years, and as you can see it's still fine, this has gotten a little worn out so the diameter is bigger and the large pin will fit through if it's hot. Right now it won't fit. But I started out using the medium-sized pin and that it would require a lot of force to clear out the clog inside the tube and eventually it just broke. One day it just snapped in pieces and uh, that was that. So I tried using the small diameter one but this is entirely useless. As you can probably see all it does is it bends. So. What I would recommend is uh, to take a drill and actually open up the hole in the tip right from the start so that you can use the big cleaning pin because this is the one that works best by far. 
The second problem that I ran into is clearly related to the use of low quality materials. The heating element is screwed into this piece of black plastic and the heat of the heating element actually softens this plastic. So you don't want to apply any sideways force to the tip like you would if you're really going to violently wiggle around on a stubborn pin trying to get it to come loose so that you can pull it out. You don't want to do that because what happened to me once is I applied too much sideways force and one of the screws actually pulled out of this black piece of plastic. Now I was able to stuff the screw back in and when I turned off the unit again the plastic it cooled down and it still is in there solidly so no permanent damage but definitely if you run this for a long time and then apply sideways force there is a risk that you're just going to rip out the uh, the entire heating element along with its uh, three screws. Let's now take the desoldering gun apart. This is the messy bit that I saved for the end of this video. Of course, as you do a lot of desoldering, this reservoir will fill up with old solder that you sucked away. So you'll have to clean this out every once in a while. So what you do is uh, there is this slider in the back of the gun. You pull that down and then this is going to pull back. Now the thing is it won't pull back far enough so it's actually quite uh, it can be quite difficult getting this uh, glass tube out but uh, you want to be careful because if you break the glass tube you can't get a replacement for that you will have to get a whole new gun. So with the application of some force this finally comes out and you got to be careful because this is spring-loaded. So there is a rubber seal in the front there is a hole in there and there you can see the end of the uh, of the metal tube. There is a uh, felt pad in the back which I should probably replace this is looking really bad but this has actually been in use for the full two years. So I'm now actually going to uh, throw this away and I will replace it with a new felt pad. So that's that. And then comes out the spring. And that spring is where usually all the old solder gets caught. So this is what that looks like and you'll now have to uh, very carefully take out all this old solder and uh, this, uh, well it can take some patience especially uh, getting this uh, big blob of solder out that accumulates in the back but there it is and there is the spring and now you can go ahead and uh, put the gun back together. So uh, yeah, clean out the glass tube a little bit, making sure not to break it. Then the metal piece and the felt pad are going back in. You take the gun and this is again going to require a little bit of patience because the slider in the back does not open up far enough. With the application of some force, with a lot of force, there we go, you can get this back in. Oh, I'll have to do this again because the felt pad got messed up. Hmm, seems like they are making these replacement pads out of a different material than uh, the ones that uh, come in the desoldering gun originally. I just had a really, really difficult time getting the replacement pad to go into the gun properly. 
it just kept falling apart. So replacement parts might not be as high quality as they should be. Anyway, a little bit of common sense after cleaning out the gun, wash your hands. It's really, really important because most solder is still lead based and you don't want to get any lead into your body. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful.